trying to be promoted comes, no one's going to stop you. No devil in hell is going to stop you from doing the will of God for your life. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So he charged his disciples in Mark chapter 6 to take nothing on their journey. Verse 9. But to go with sandals on their feet and not to put on two tunics on the garments. The King James Bible says not to put on two coats. If the disciples were very poor, they wouldn't be having two coats. They probably wouldn't have had any coats to wear. Praise God. Hallelujah. He wouldn't have been able to tell to tell them or to tell us, praise God, that, that, that if um, someone slaps you on one cheek off of the other, if, if they take your coat, give them the undergarment. Praise God. These are sounding like people who have something. And that's what we have to do. We have to forgive others. Forgiveness is key if we're going to do greater works. If you can't forgive your brothers or love your brother and sister who you can see, how can we say we love God? Praise God. God is love. And he cannot help but love you. Praise the name of Jesus. How much time do I have? Um, three hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Because if Pentecostal people, well, we're Christians, we, we just go uh, a long time. <laughs> Verse 10. And he told them, wherever you go into a house, stay there until you leave the place. Praise God. So they're not to be moving from house to house, you know, because he will send them into different towns to preach the gospel, to do his work, to do his will. Praise God. Don't keep going all over the place, but stay there. Praise the name of Jesus. Verse 11. And if any community will not receive and accept and welcome you, you see there comes rejection, but he's telling them what to do. Praise God. And they refuse to listen to you when you depart. He didn't say never to speak to them except if they refuse, because we don't force people. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He never forces himself upon them. But he did offer to minister the gospel to them, and if they refuse, shake off. Praise God. Shake off the dust that is on your feet. Praise God for a testimony against them. That is exactly what Paul did when men they a um, poisonous snake attached itself to his hand. Paul was not walking in faith. Praise God. He, he was walking under God's power, under his anointing. He knew who he was in Christ. He knew that great is he that is in him, that he that is in the world. He knew that he, was, he could try to stop his sportings and go for all. Oh, everyone say that word. Oh, I like the word all when it refers to good things, when it refers to the gospel. Praise God. Yes, yeah, so he gave him power to try. He knew that he had power to try to stop his scorpions and over the power of all the enemy, and nothing shall be inserted to be able to shake it off. Praise God. When when you go and then you go out in the power of the Holy Spirit and you go and you minister to someone and they curse you and they spit in your face and they tear the Bible up right in your face and they curse your God in your face, you don't give up. Shake it off. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Paul did. What did Jesus do? He kept on going about and doing good. He did so many miracles. Praise God. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those people always kept finding for him, seeing if they could trick him up. But what did Jesus do? He continued to go about doing good. He only did the things that the Father told him to do, and he only said the things that the Father told him to do. And he only went where the Father told him to go. So sometimes God might forbid you from going into that town. Follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He forbid, I think Paul and they wanted to go somewhere, was it two different places, I think, in the Bible. They wanted to go and the Holy Spirit forbid. Sometimes it's not in your territory. Sometimes it's for another believer to go there. So listen to the Holy Spirit and do what he tells you. Praise God. Let's continue on that verse. Mark 6, verse 11, the second half. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the judgment day than for that town. Praise God. So, so Jesus um, comforted his disciples in this verse because he was telling them, you know, you, you, you're doing my work and sometimes people are going to reject you. Sometimes they're going to come against you. And sometimes it's people, your brothers and sisters in the house of God that are going to do it. But keep standing. Having done all to stand, stand. Praise God. Keep on trusting me. Keep on believing me. Keep on obeying me. Have your mind stayed on me. And then you'll have perfect peace. Praise God. Don't, don't look at the circumstances. Don't look at what the people are saying. Don't listen to them. But hide the word of God in your heart. And then you will not sin against me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Continue doing what I told you to do. And ignore. I had a situation in my life. 
this is going back some years before it's gone. I uh, had uh, one of my neighbors I used to help her and help to take the children to school and things like that. Praise the name of Jesus. But one day she wanted me to collect her son from the nursery. And, and I went, you know, I went to do it. And, and then her boyfriend was there and he, he was cursing and he cursed me out nasty. I, I didn't do anything to him. I, I was just trying to help. I was trying to be a good neighbor. Praise God, but he, he was horrible. And then I um, went all, I burst into tears and so on. And I went home and then another neighbor, I got another neighbor to look after the child. Because he was saying he was there to, co to collect the child. But then the um, teacher rang and clarified and says, no, it's not you, it's this lady. So I took the child home, but I didn't quite get to my house. I was crying and another neighbor saw me, who normally babysits for the person we're used to. She took the child from me, praise the name of Jesus. And, and then after, I uh, thought to myself, I'm not going to do this anymore. But you know the Holy Spirit speaks. He still speaks in dreams. And, and, and then he says, you know, I dreamt. <coughs> it was Galatians 6, verse 7. Praise God. And I opened the Bible and I read it to see what he was saying. So he was saying, you are running the race nobly. Who has interfered and hindered and stopped you from heeding and following the truth? And verse 8 goes on to say, this evil persuasion is not from him who called you, who invited you to freedom in Christ. Praise God. So when, when God tells you to do something, even though you might be hurt in the process, it's the devil trying to get you off track. And you just have to keep going. The only way we can overcome evil is with good. Praise God. And when we continually overcome evil with good, we will win them. We will win souls for the kingdom of God. Praise God. And then we'll be able to do the greater works. Praise God. Because Jesus, is, he was smart, spat on. Many things happened to him and he continued to do good. And Ephesians 5.1 commands us to be ye followers of God, just as children imitate their fathers. So let us just imitate the good things that we can see in ours and imitate the good things in God. Because not every good thing is a God thing. Praise God. God might call you to praise and worship. And because you're a hard worker in the church, many people might be calling you and say, can you do this, can you do that, can you got family, you got homework, you got the school, and it's just getting a bit too much. So in order not to burn out, ask God what he wants you to do. And if he called you to the praise and worship ministry, focus and do it and do a good job. You can't hold the task on everything. You don't, you don't know everything. Your calling might be specific. And if, if you stick to that, I'm not saying you can't help out in other departments, but you have your main focus has to be on what God has told you to do. And then you will do well and you'll run the race. And then you'll be able to say like, Paul, I have kept the faith. I have run a good race, you know. And then he was able to, to go home after he had finished his race with joy. Back to Mark 6 as we begin to close. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Next time I'll probably have to get people to pray with Marcus. Praise the name of Jesus, because God, God is a good God. Praise God, and all scripture is given for inspiration. Praise God, it's propped up for the proof of doctrine. Praise God, and the man of God may be found thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mark chapter 6. <coughs> Verse 12. So these are the disciples, praise God. So they went out and preached that men should repent that they should change their minds for the better and heartily amend their ways with abhorrence of their past sins. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there's a difference between confessing your sin and repenting. Praise God. True repenting means being sorry for your sin and turning away. Being sorry for your sins and turning away from it. But just confessing, you can just confess out of habit and just say, I'm sorry, and you keep on doing the same thing. And then when we do that, and I'm sure we're all guilty of it, because I, I have done that on many occasions, it means that we're not really sorry because if we keep repeating the same thing over and over, praise God. But when we repent, we turn away from it. And we can only turn away from our sin with the power and the help of the Holy Ghost. So we have to ask God to help us to do that. So they were preaching the gospel to people. Verse 13. And they drove out many unclean spirits and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Praise God. So when they obeyed God, they were able to drive out these on clear spirits. Praise God. The anointing with oil represents the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So they drove out the unclean spirits 
and then they were able to cure the sick. Praise God. Hallelujah. So sometimes many people are afflicted with sickness year after year. It's the same thing over and over. Sometimes it's a demon of sickness. You know, we had the woman in Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. She was bowed over with the spirit of infirmity, 18 and all hard years. Praise God. It was a spirit of infirmity. Praise God. And that spirit needs to be dealt with. And we thank God that Jesus dealt with that spirit. So we have power over all things spirits. I know it's not taught a lot in church, but we have to use it as the authority of the believer. And when we do these things and we're not afraid, praise God, because God is there. When we lay hands on the sick, God is there with us and the sick shall recover. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go quickly to um, Acts 19, verses 11 to 12, because if, if we want to do greater works, we're going to have to do like what these great apostles did. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When we lay hands on the sick, it should not be routine. The sick should recover. Praise God. When those disciples cast out the demons, the demons went and the people were healed. Praise the name of Jesus. Whenever Jesus um, laid hands on the person, they were always healed. You know, he, he never refused to heal anyone. It was only in his hometown that he was hindered, where he could only lay hands on a few a few um, sickly folk, and it was because of their unbelief. So unbelief is a killer of faith. Praise God. You have to get rid of the unbelievers. Jesus got rid of them when he was um, when he was dealing with Jairus' daughter. Praise God. He only had a few selected people who could come, and he was going to do those miracles. So sometimes you're carrying people from your ministry who are baggage who you need to get rid of. They're probably caught to another ministry, and they're hindering you from doing what God needs you to do. So if you want to do Greater works, we have to get rid of excess baggage. Not only throw away, for God. Sometimes your sisters or your brothers or whatever, your friends, you're going in two different directions. Praise God. And you don't want anybody keeping you back. Acts 19, verses 11 to 12. Because God wrought miracles by the hands of his um, disciples. Praise the name of Jesus. I've got about four other verses, and that'll be true. Praise God. Acts 19, 11 to 12. And God did unusual and extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Praise God. So hands are very important. So that handkerchiefs or towels or aprons which had touched his skin were carried away and put upon the sick and their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Praise God. Hallelujah. So um, God can do that. How wonderful it would be for us to get to the stage like... I'm carrying such a powerful anointing that my shadow, people are bringing people out in, in their sick beds from the hospital. The road is being filled with all these people just hoping for my shadow to pass, to pass over them and then they're healed. And it can happen to us because if we're going to do the greater works where we have to obey God, we're called to a higher place of holiness, a higher place of purity, a higher place of honesty, a higher place of love, praise God, and a higher place of obedience. And as we obey God and live holy, pure lives, and our heart is right before God and man, and the forgiveness, we're not holding off against anyone, the miracles will come back to the church because God wants to do it, praise God. We must not be afraid of casting out demons, praise God, because if, even the seven sons of Sceva, they, they tried to do it, they weren't afraid, praise God, but they weren't anointed to do it because Satan cannot cast out Satan, a house divided against itself cannot stand, praise God. So they failed and um, demon from one of the men beat them up and they were stripped and all of that. Let's read those verses and we'll conclude. Praise God. Verse 13. Then some of the traveling Jews, exorcists, men who adjure evil spirits, also undertook to call the name of the Lord over those who had evil spirits, saying, I solemnly impure and charge you by the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. See, it was Paul preaches. Paul had a relationship with Jesus, but they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. They had a relationship with Satan. They were working for Satan. Praise God. Seven sons of a certain Jewish chief priest named Sceva were doing this. But one evil spirit retorted, Jesus I know and Paul I know about. But who are you? So when we're casting out devils, we have to be obeying God. We have to be holy, spirit-filled Christians and God authorizing us to do it. And then they won't ask, who are you? Praise God. Because if we're a child of God, the devil will recognize us and he will come out. Praise God. You didn't see Jesus struggling to cast out any demon. He would tell them to come out and they came out instantly. Praise God on many occasions. Then the man in whom the evil spirit dwelt leapt upon them, mastering two of them, and was so violent against them 
that they dashed out of their house in fear, stripped naked and wounded. Praise God. So, so um, these unbelievers, they attempted to do it. Praise God. And they weren't scared. And Christians should not be scared to cast out demons. Praise God. Father, we just bless you tonight. We magnify your name. We thank you for your wonderful word. We thank you it came forth with power, might, and authority. We thank you that we're edified, we're built up, we came, we will be coming in better than the way, we're going out better than the way we came in. And we praise you and we give you honor and glory for it. In Jesus' wonderful, precious, and perfect name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.